The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, is meeting with chairman of political parties in Abuja ahead of the two off-cycle governorship elections in Edo and Ondo State in September and November this year. The national chairman of the ruling All Progressives Congress, that of the Labour Party and the Social Democratic Party, are among those attending this meeting. Following our first meeting held two months ago, on top on the agenda for this meeting is the update on the preparations for the two forthcoming governorship polls in Edo and Ondo State. Today's meeting will update party leaders on preparations for the Edo and Ondo governorship elections. As you are aware, the Edo State governorship election is holding in the next four months on Saturday, 21st September 2024 while the Ondo governorship election holds in the next six months on Saturday, 16th November, 2024. Regarding the election in Ondo State, the electoral umpire urges the political parties to adhere strictly to the deadline for the nomination of candidates as the commission resumes continuous voter registration exercise in the two states. Turning to Ondo State, political parties have just concluded their primaries. 18 political parties conducted primaries monitored by the Commission. I wish to remind you that parties have one week to the deadline for the nomination of candidates. As the elections in the two states approach, the Commission has decided to resume the continuous voter registration in the two states to enable eligible citizens who are not registered as voters to do so. The political parties, however, expressed concern on the low voter turnout recorded in recent elections and call for the restoration of an annual grant to political parties to mobilize voters. We are deeply concerned by the low turnout in recent years, particularly in 2023 general elections. It calls for concerted effort by all stakeholders in the electoral process. The need to restore annual grants to political parties that was expunged from the Constitution by the National Assembly cannot be overemphasized. This is the second time that the electoral umpire is meeting with political parties ahead of the forthcoming elections in Edo and Ondo State, which are the second major off-cycle elections to be undertaken by INEC after the 2023 general election. All right, well, back to talking about INEC, and uh, Mr. Peter Amba is here with us. He's former chairman of IPAC, that's Interparty Advisory Council. Good morning. Thank you for coming on Good today. Good morning. Oh, dear. I don't know. I just remember those days when we spoke. I next spoke a lot about the build-up to the general elections. Well, the elections eventually came and went, and people have their opinions. But now, talking about the two elections forthcoming, uh, Edo and Ondo, in four and six months, So, and then the CVR. So all of those preparations, I mean... The latter part of that was talking about the low voter turnout. So, having been in that particular position, could you just tell us from all of these meetings and, I don't know, if you feed off the last elections, do you get the sense that maybe what significance, first of all, will this Ondo and Edo elections be at all for the Commission and for Nigerians? I think for the Commission, is um, an opportunity for them to repair whatever public perception that is out there because of the fallout of our previous elections. If you look at when we started introducing um, introducing IT and electoral mm -hmm. gadgets into our elections, uh, we brought about a lot of hope for young people and for even the elderly. And in 2015, when we tried to apply that, the card reader, you saw that the commission came with the, left, the, the, the gift was given to us by right hand and taken over by the left hand. You know, they brought a, a, another provision that there was a um, uh, incident form. This reform became a problem, and the election, you know, went the way it went. In 2023, we talk about the Beavers, a very wonderful innovation by the Commission, Beavers and the IRF. And on the day of the election, with all the promises and all the, you know, statements made by the Commission, including the spokesman, the investors, and uh, we talked about that the elections, you know, will be conducted through the use of the Beavers, through the use of, and it will be, you know, all, with real time, you know, uploading to IRF. 
when the time came, the election result couldn't be uploaded, and Nigerians were yeah. worried. But Mr. May, you know, the, remember we met political uh, political parties and groups like yours, IPAC, and they did tell us too at the time. INEC has done all the preparations, and so people uh, who have the impression that you lot had consulted properly with them to uh, give that kind of comment. I think it was because based on the expectation and the goodwill that um, you know we felt that um, at the time that INEC was put into the public. INEC was very confident. If you look at the way INEC was speaking before, um, probably before the 2020 election, you see the way they were very determined to give the election, you know, a new a new record, you know, for the Nigerian people. But what happened was very disheartening. And going forward, I, I think the Nigerian people, um, electorate and the Nigerian citizens must start to ask more questions and uh, interrogate the commission more than what we're doing. You have uh, interagency um, uh, consultative forum as election security. You have a uh, political party and INEC meeting. You have civil society. These are uh, an INEC meeting. These are civil society. These are critical stakeholders. I believe after holding separate, se separate of these meetings, there should be a forum where all these persons meet. Because if you have uh, um, the security agencies that meet with INEC, the political party leaderships are not there. And if they are not there, you know that the security agency go back to brief the Mr. President. It's also, it's also a member of the. So have party. they requested to be there, and they were told that we, we requested we, we requested at our own time, and, and we've also been talking to the chairman of um, the IPAC to also make some continue to press this one so that you can have a broader, you know, um, how they call it, consultative forum where everybody will sit down and then examine this issue properly. Because if you talk about CVR, the largest effective, how they call it, participation for CVR in was in the last election. Nigerians in diaspora, Nigeria. Yeah. Has we're really interested. The security part. Isn't it a little dangerous? If you bring in politicians there and they know what security wants to do, these are the same lot of people who will go there and well, start it. They are not saying what security wants to do. Security will have to you know, evaluate what has happened in the past. Mm -hmm. And then hear from the political parties directly. Because these security agencies are briefing the president and other national security okay, so uh, what? representatives. They bring in party members to what? Hear... What you know, happened? in America, as soon as you become a, 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 a candidate for the election, you get security reports. Like Donald Trump has it is today, you get security reports. Because it's, it's, it's for you to balance the space, for you to level the playing field. Because the, the, the playing field as it is today is not level. Why are political parties asking for funding? Because Nigerians, can't, Nigerians don't believe, they don't see reason to contribute to election, except with the emergence of the 2023 election. Nigerians don't believe, because there's a deficit, there's a trust de deficit between both the citizens and politicians. So they don't believe, and so and those who are in power, who runs, go, who has um, control, political party have controls of state and have and hold on to presidential pres 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 seat, contribute from common post to the management of their parties. Which we, this this is not an this is not eating at all. Everybody knows about this. Everybody in the political cycle so, knows about. It. And so you now give a, a, a there's a there's a there's a, there's a trust changing of those who don't have people in power. So you can't expect that you are starting a match and somebody has a five. They were giving ahead. them funds before, and then they stopped. What changed? They, 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 were, they, they were giving their forms at the stop in 2008. So, it was so in 2008, what was and it? I think it was similar. Did they achieve similar. anything while they were giving them? I, I don't even believe that funding of the political party is, is a problem. I believe that the free and fair, transparent electoral processes will lead to Nigerians believing that they can, you know, put people in office that will be responsible mm -hmm. and that will respect the, the sanctity of, their, of, of the constitution and then respect to work for the people. If you find out governors that work in this country, are governors that few people elected them because if you if you if people don't own the process if people don't believe that they, their vote you know brought them into power they continue to mismanage government resources and think that by the next election they will force themselves on the people again elections must be transparent mm. elections must be credible for us to have good governance and development in this country there's nothing we can do about that if INEC that has been given the responsibility in um, um, chapter um, section 15 chapter um, part one of the constitution, if they don't take it seriously to undertake to organize and conduct election, there will be problem. Mm. You know, I was listening and I was enjoying your relaying of you know what had happened with people's confidence when you went to 2015 and you are coming to 2023, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, one of the reasons why a number of people had faith in the 2023 elections and the uh, What's the name of this device now? The as Card reader was no, 2015. Yeah, Beavers and Beavers, Yes, the Beavers, mm -hmm. as marketed by um, INEC, was because of the off-cycle elections that had preceded the 2023 elections. So we had Anambra, we had, uh, was it um, Edo? Yes, there was also the Edo elections. Edo election. of, yes, and then you had, I think there was one more election that happened before the 2023 elections, possibly this Ondo as well. Uh, where the card reader, beg your pardon, the Beavers was deployed and 
we understand that it was who the, the people elected, that you know, their choices were reflected, and there was general content, it was seem. Um, I'm just a little curious, because we have had off-cycle elections after the 2023 general elections. And you might say, oh, you know, for people who actually excuse what happened in the 2023 elections, okay, the beavers walked, IREV was faulty, something happened, or, you know, the glitch, let's go with the mm -hmm. term, that INEC used. Um, would we say that, you know, the conduct of the other off-cycle elections after the 2023 elections was able to restore any kind of confidence in the Nigerian people? I think the, the off cycles election and the other, you know, by elections that were conducted in February. Yes, we saw so that of uh, Kogi and Imo. That's the off cycle the, the, election. The one of Kogi was and Bayelsa. The, the, the result, the election was really bad. Where you where you see that um, in some cases and some local government, the card reader was not the um, card reader wasn't used. Even if you look at the cases, the beavers. That, yeah, the beavers wasn't used because you look at the numbers of accredited voters that is supposed to be tallied with the one that is on the card reader. It's not. It's not. It's not tallying. Because politicians are telling you that they want to be able to tally the numbers of accreditation voter, accredited voters, all those who have voted with the numbers of registered voters. And what the what the what the beavers is supposed to do was is supposed to put a benchmark to the level to the level of how you want to rig the election. It's supposed to be a protective shield. So what the I like the innovation was super, but just that the implementation, like everything that has happened in Nigeria, was a problem. Yeah, so because did, uh, if you have a beavers, mm -hmm. and you have a you have a beavers and you have an IRF. Mm -hmm. That in real time in every polling unit, you 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 take a snapshot of that P, uh, that file and make it a PDF and upload it to the IRF portal. It gives a real time information to those who are contesting the election. And because when you don't do that, the process of taking our elections result from the polling unit to the coalition center, what coalition center, local government coalition and state coalition. That's where the fraud is. People will will let the result. Those people in government will. Deploy all sort of talk, 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 or how they call it tactics. Stop people on the way. Look at the result by the the Center for Democracy and Development. The number of deaths that was recorded for 2023 election. If the, if the election had stopped at the polling unit, this death would not occur. So I am a little oh. curious. I mean, as political parties, <clears throat> people who are constantly engaging with INEC, especially at forums like this, do you take it up with them? Yeah, yeah I was very I was very um, I, I, I was happy with the IPAC chairman with what he said. That I actually to also to hold on to the how they call it the other side of the of the bargain by making sure the election will come because INEC is telling them to go talk to their members to come to be to vote and come outside to you know educate the electorate but INEC will make sure that the election also is free fair and credible you you can't even the the ad hoc staff would know that this country we are running this country that belongs to all of us if you go outside to conduct election and you feel that you will not be able to do what is right for the people. You are emboldening those who are in government, who, who are man mismanaging, who are you know, running our country down. Because there's no other way you can secure this country by making sure the elections... Is it the yeah, well, well, INEC alone? Political parties have done their own part. Yeah, but but, but when, when you say INEC should make sure, what can they do about security? Are they in charge of security? They are not in charge. They are collaborating with government agencies. Yeah, but government what can they do in that? What they should do, INEC already has power to, you know, to, 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 to take people and the Nigerian um, Bar Association and agree to provide lawyers that will prosecute, prosecute those who have undermined our electoral processes. INEC should take over that power. INEC is, is very powerful with some of the functions that have been given to INEC. INEC is an independent commission. They can try these people and when you start to try people and they go to prison, you can see the level of money spraying has reduced. People must be able to understand there's consequences for every negative action that is taken against the Nigerian state. If there are no consequences, and then people believe that when they take, look, there's a power by the attorney general of the state, not the prosecutor. They can withdraw a case while it's in court. If you arrest a party in this state and the governor feels that it's, uh, it's party members that were arrested, he will tell it at the general of the state to apply the, 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 uh, the principle of nolly prosecute and say, say they will not continue mm -hmm. this prosecution and that they want to withdraw the case from uh, court. I was going to say money spray is a negative action for who? Certainly not the receiver. But I was, <laughs> let's go back to what it is that we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about you know the fact that you have evidence. I mean, this is some, when we talked about Kogi, for instance, just recently, and Badly we know that the uh, the uh, the Supreme Court is going to be determining a number of issues um, mm. very soon on that particular uh, election, and it'll be very interesting to see, uh, you know, what is eventually decided. But what I'm trying to say is that there is there are, there are certain evidence 
Uh, it should just go beyond, I would imagine, that just saying, INEC, you have to conduct free and fair elections. That is, uh, that's what you would say even in peace times. But even in, in times when we now have concrete evidence that some places, this is what transpired, shouldn't there be accountability on the part of INEC uh, to political parties like yourself, and by extension to the Nigerian people, who say, this is what we noticed in these elections. Can they explain why this is the situation? Uh, it, 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 I've, I've said, if you listen to the statement by the IPAC chairman, it was very clear. And INEC has to hold on to the end of his own, you know, this, this uh, agreement. And uh, they, they ask, there's, a, there's a level. Political parties don't have power to supervise over INEC. Though there are critical stakeholders in the electoral process. There the are other means they might deploy, maybe like protest, do whatever they no, like. But I, again, no, I'm not asking that they supervise. I, That's not the word I'm, I'm, I'm they, I didn't they, use that word. They won't go beyond writing letters and, 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 and um, speaking to the conscience of the commission to do what is right. That's what they've been doing. That's what political parties have been doing since 1999. Speaking to the conscience of, and there have been improvements. I, I won't take it away from my neck that there have been intention to improve on our electoral processes. But the intention has he, has he metamorphosed into reality that the elections have become more credible with the intentions that they have. So that's a question. If, if questions are now being asked, doesn't it put a burden on INEC to answer the questions that's been posed? INEC has, has been speaking from two sides of the mouth. You could see first us when before, before the election that the, um, that the beavers is mandatory for the election. The videos are there. Mm -hmm. They are there to prove that he said this. Mm -hmm. The commission chairman said this. But after that, they say, no, it's not mandatory. The process for conducting elections still remain the process as enshrined in the Constitution. If you, if you go to what political parties should do, which you can find in Section 223, 24 to 29, that they will canvass for votes. No, no let's will, not get it twisted. They said the beavers are, is mandatory. What, they, what the big dispute was is now the issue of the IREV, whether the IREV is mandatory. Transmission of results. Transmission of results. That's where the big issue is. But where you allege that in places, in some places in this by in this, uh, not just by elections now, the post uh, off cycle elections, that the beavers wasn't even deployed. Not even deployed. In, in there are even accusations in some places that the beef, that results were even uploaded before before election, especially in Kogi State on Friday. So these are accusations accusation that is in public domain, and I think that I next you will find. A proper way to sit because INEC must be accountable. It's accountable to the Which other proper way, if not the step of conference? This, 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 this way is not even enough. It's not sufficient. They are talking behind closed door. Let them be a live broadcast and be able to tell Nigerians and break down the processes because they are not just accountable to political party alone. Mm -hmm. You have to build public confidence. People must see that you are genuinely working that election, <laughs> election work for their interest mm -hmm. because if you don't do that, mm -hmm. see, I don't care. We don't really care who gets into power. What we care about, who gets into power, is it the elected transparently? Do, or through a process that is acceptable to Nigerian people. Uh, Nigerian Nigeria people making this decision on their own. These decisions are being made from them by the commission. What will the live broadcast change? Even the dead broadcast and next had nothing changed. The thing will change. Is, see, pro will pro change? politics everywhere in the world. It's not just the political party that makes it work. I'm, I, these are facts. If you go to if you go to Capitol Hill today in America, people are protesting for the right of dogs. The po Nigerian system must stop being docile. They must participate in this process. A video was going about some time ago, in night, uh, 30 years ago, where people were still struggling to get for in Lagos. That place was close to where I was brought up. And now two people are still struggling to get for it. It is not just the political party that has this responsibility. The citizens also have this responsibility to call government to order and then make sure that this request is made. Because we will continue to live in the fact that if you don't better for one of my brothers, this is for me. Then this is not the country we want for ourselves. So the country do, do, we want for ourselves is where things work for everybody. Do you see any, any kind of change or improvements for Edo and Ondo? Yeah, I, 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 in the Edo election, the off-season election of Edo you talked about, the citizens, citizen advocacy and participation was very high. And even the commission knew, was aware that whatever they do, they would, uh, against the, you know, the, the, the intentions of the people, will also have a negative effect on, on the commission. And they stood their ground. But I, I believe that the commission should know that what people want Nigeria want, want is a free election, what Nigeria wants is a credible election, and what Nigeria wants is an election that will represent their, their vote, one man, one vote on the ballot. And I, 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 we are keeping our eyes open, and every Nigerian are keeping their eyes open. Uh, Professor Mahmoud um, Yakubo should sign out in, in a loud, with, with a loud one by doing what is right, and by making sure that those over 100 staff that will conduct the next election, like I say, are welcome 
and are well are given the necessary equipment to do what is right. Wait a minute, are we not glossing over something that the chairman of ANEC had said at some point about election management? How he thinks that ANEC had a lot of burden on their shoulders. That in all those elections. That is that for the bundling of the commission. So they? what should we be doing about that? You, As a country, you, should you, always you, sit down and say, you "Look, see, you see, there, there are a lot of reports. If you look at Justice Will report, where Brian Jibu participated, and all the other sort you know, people who are still here participated in that report, it, 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 that ANEC was overburdened. Sincerely, ANEC does delineation, voter education, voter political party registration, political party congress and convention, convention. A lot of work that ANEC has to go through. ANEC also has to go to court." to defend the conduct of elections that they've conducted. So people have talked about several... But, but we're paying for it anyway. People have talked about several that we should have independent national electoral commission that is responsible solely for the conduct of election. And you have political party registration and, and a management commission. We have that in, in Sierra Leone and other countries. It's, Nigeria is not the first country that will do that. So because you have to release, relieve the, the burden of the commission and allow different agencies to do what they should do and then focus on specifics. Because the INEC chairman, you can even calculate the level of letters and distraction is going to be getting from doing other things apart from election. All right. So for you, um, what will be your next move? What are you thinking about doing moving forward? Are you still which party at the moment? I'm in Labour Party. Oh, so that picture that is circulating about Peter will be meeting at you. What does that mean? What's going on there? You, you know, if those who know my history with um, politics, you know that I've you know, continue particip I've been participating in alliances and coalition. And I, I, I feel that for the opposition, uh, sitting on this side, it is easier to go to the, to the government in power and, and then want to be part of them. You won't, have, you won't lack anything to say. You always say that there's sharing of rights and piloting being given, an economic policy that will never take Nigeria out of poverty. I, I think the opposition leaders should come together. You know, you know working across purposes will not generate the kind so how of should these people, how should they come together now? They're going to come together. They're both contested. As it doesn't matter. At six. the end of the day, they will, they will sit down and then discuss the issues. The, there are issues that will be brought on the table. They're not the only one to sit down. There will be, there will be a broader, a broader um, committee, a broader group of persons that will come around and then speak to the conscience of both of them. Another presidential candidate, you speak to their conscience and say, this is our country. We can't let it derail. What if uh, Atiku says, okay, uh, Mr. B, you can be my vice again? Atiku is running a pre preemptive decision that you, you already break the accord because Obi has a lot of support. Atiku has his own support. None of them should be undermined in the process of coming together. And there are, there are other people, you saw Sulem, let me do, and all the rest, it's Araki that they are talking to. When they come on the table, on the round table, and the opposition groups decide to discuss about Nigeria, it should be about Nigeria first before you talk about who, who's going to be if, on the if they all come together, do you think Nigerians will eventually say, okay, let's try that because they know what they can do, what they've done before, this brand of politicians. So if they pull together, what difference do you think that will make? We are not talking about who's going to be the presidential candidate at the moment. We're talking about the opposition yeah. coalition mm -hmm. working together for a particular purpose to make sure that we do one thing. They are not just going to... For me, I think the elections are in phases. There's a pre-election phase, there's a during and the post-election phase. And if you don't get it right in the pre, you can't get it right in the, in the, during the election. On the date of the election, you can't get it right. You must prepare ahead of time. And that preparation entails that you can need to request for um, electoral and judicial reforms that will protect the election on the election day. They are very key things that you must ask for. And, and if, they, if you sit aside and everybody is speaking from one corner of the room, it don't get, it don't have the vibration needed to get to all Nigerians. So but, the coming together is a force. What would you say about supporters of Mr. B who says no? It's either he goes for number one seat or nothing. You, you, I understand the, you know, the, the feeling of the supporters of B. I also understand the feeling of the supporters of uh, Atiku. Yeah, you're a politician, so you should. No, no, it's not, it's not, it's not about being poly, politics. It's about when you believe in something and you feel that something is going to be rubbed off negatively or positively to what you don't want. You also have feelings. But this is just about, you don't, you don't express feelings in about taking power. Power is about concerted effort, organization, and determination with proper planning to be in government. It is not just in something that you run with, you, you wake up in the morning, how your mood tells you that's what power is. What do you think young people should do, for instance, having seen what happened in Senegal, for them here to also, I mean, try and be on the front seat, I mean, to say the I least. 
that's why we, we need a free and fair election. Hey, look, young people would have had more opportunity if we had free local government elections. There's over 8,000 councillors to be contested. There's over 774 seven, chairmanship to be contested. And with that, that in, in, in 1999, when this, the Fourth Republic was about to start, the, the criteria that was used to conduct the general election of 1999 was conducted in, 20, in 1998, when local government elections were conducted around, around the country. And then those parties that did not meet the certain um, percentage that was required to be on the ballot were in on the ballot. That, those parties like GBL, GND, they were in on the ballot. So you, 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 and you saw in my own area, we had the local government chairman, Ako, who was telling the governor that, look, I'm a governor of my community. Because you can't sack him, you can't remove him, and his money comes directly to the local government from the federation account. But with the joint state and local government joint, the state and local government joint account, mm -hmm. the, the, the local government has been abolished. Because, because the governors will not call for the committee to meet, and they will continue to you know, take the money. There are cases in this country when even President Mahmoud Buhari, as bad as his government was, said it openly, that they should bring all local government, local government is aware that local government chairmen are returning money to their state governor. By withdrawing the money, so I, I, I wonder why EFCC have let, exempted local government um, chairman from, from 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 investigation and prosecution because that is where the weakness of our electoral uh, second weakness of our electoral system. Is. The CX are the CX are tootled bulldog for clarification. CX is state independent electoral commission. They are tootled bulldog. They are doing nothing. You wake up tomorrow. There are caretaker con um, committees in over 20, 20 states in this country. What the, what, what 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 kind of authority does the state governor have? to be appointing caretaker committee for local government. That law, the, that law is not there, but because they, we have they, we, an Alleluia State Assembly, that whatever the governor say, they will make a law for it. If the governor smile the money, they will make a law for smiling. So <laughs> this is the problem we are facing. So the election, if elections are free, young people should participate, contest, contest election, and also win. All right, Mr. Peter, I'm a former chairman of IBAC and a member of the Labour Party. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you. Well,